Shalom, peace be unto you. Welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Numbers chapter 7. In this chapter, well, we're going to find out how many verses there are. Um, I didn't write I didn't write it down at the beginning, but uh, anything that I omit that I do not mention will be in the description, the description box below, so please look at that. Uh, minor differences will not be included in this video, uh, according to my discernment. Okay, so the first significant difference I find here is verse 2. There's an omission talking about 12 princes. They're not even mentioned at all. So referring to the 12 princes, princes uh, that resided uh, over the numbering. So they were ones that presided, I'm sorry, presided over the numbering. On the contrary, the Masoretic says they were over them that were numbered, meaning uh, in the Septuagint, they, these 12 princes, oversaw the numbering process. Uh, not only were they ones who held positions, positions of authority over them that numbered. Okay. So uh, in the Masoretic, it's saying, okay, they were only holding positions of authority over the ones doing, doing the numbering. But in fact, the Septuagint is saying, no, they actually oversaw this process. They were involved and participated in it. They weren't just sitting on their laurels and just letting someone else do it. Okay, verse 3 says, wagon, a wagon from two princes versus uh, four two princes. For two of the princes, not uh, from them. Actually, it is from them, not for them. So that's a significant difference there. And then moving on to verse 9. Of the sacred things versus the sanctuary. So the difference here uh, is these are things in the sept versus an area in the mass. Uh, note. Just an important reminder, you cannot bear a place on your shoulders unless you're Samson. Uh, verse 10, he anointed it. Uh, Moses is who it's talking about. If you look at verse 84, um, it was anointed. Versus it, we are not told who did it in the Maz. Anyone could have done it. Uh, verse 84 shows us. Uh, let's just go right down to 84. Just to confirm, this was the dedication of the altar in the day in which Moses anointed it by the princes of the sons of Israel, 12 silver chargers, 12 silver bowls, uh, 12 golden censers. So again, this is in brackets, so it's not actually there, but it is uh, the translator's uh, assumption. It's their suspicion. That's what they believe. Uh, they believe it's Moses who did it. Okay. Moving on to verse 11. Verse 11, there's no mission. It says, one chief each day. So that's uh, omitted as well as chief in general. There's just no chief. Uh, they replace chief with prince. So I have to... Write that down. Okay. We see a, continue, a continuous difference in verse 13. The holy shekel versus the shekel of the sanctuary. And then a continuous big difference in, in verse 14. It says that one golden censer of 10 shekels. So this is the weight of the golden censer. It weighs 10 shekels versus one spoon of 10 of gold so that that's a little confusing does this mean that this one spoon was made of 10 shekels of gold i mean how else can you interpret that verse 15 a continuous difference we see uh, an omission of the he lamb that's not there continually and then a calf versus a bullock a bullock is a male calf so that's specific in the 
Maz and the Sept, it could be any gender. Uh, verse 17, a continuous sig diff, significant difference is uh, the U, the U lambs were omitted. Uh, a U is a female. Okay, and they also omit a heifer or heifer, which is a female calf. So why is this significant? Well, because the okay, let's redo that. Why is this significant? That it's omitting the U you lambs and the heifer sacrifice well it is significant because these are specific sacrifices specific offerings that need to be given this is the peace offering so if you're only giving the rams according to the maz if you're just following the maz it's the rams the lambs and the goats and oxen so uh, there are four categories Let's look at the sept. If we're going by the sept, we're giving heifers, rams, goats, ewe lambs. So these aren't just any uh, these aren't just any oxen. They are specific. Uh, they have to be female. Female calves, and and not not just uh, any age. It has to be a young calf and female, and then a ewe is a female lamb so they have to give the female lamb as well it cannot be male according to this rendering in the septuagint so we see verse 20 uh please see verse 14 i'm not sure what that means i think it's referring to the uh that same difference and then i'm gonna just you know what i'm gonna paste that all these verses will be pasted in the description so i won't refer to them anymore Verse 27, we see an omission of the he lamb again. Uh, I'm going to omit all of these again. And then verse 84, we looked at that. Uh, verse 86, we have a clarification here. The clarification is, drum roll please. The Masoretic admits, it is the weight of the golden spoons. The golden spoons were 12 full of incense, weighing 10 shekels apiece. So that is an admission saying that's how much these golden spoons weighed, 10 shekels and uh, per piece, okay? And we look at the Septuagint as 12 golden censers. So these aren't spoons, they're censers full of incense. And all the gold of the shekels were 120 shekels, okay? So it's a little bit... It is different in the Septuagint. And then we look at uh, verse 88. Let me just clarify. Uh, the whole verse is different. So, so the whole the whole verse is different because it's talking about censers. Uh, the other one is talking about spoons. So they're not the same item at all. Different in form and different in function. We're looking now at verse 88. We have an omission of ewe lambs. Uh, let's read it. All the cattle for a sacrifice of peace offering, 24 heifers, 60 rams, 60 he goats of a year old, 60 ewe lambs of a year old without blemish. This is the, the dedication of the altar after that uh, consecrated and after he anointed him, talking about Moses and Aaron. And the omission here is ewe lambs of a year old without blemish. So again, once again, if you're doing this offering, uh, you will not be hitting the mark. You're going to miss the mark, just like Cain. You're going to miss the mark. Even if you have all the good intentions in the world, you're not following the law to the letter. Now, I'm not saying we should always just go by the law the letter of the law all the time it's the spirit of the, of the law that goes over there that is over it however we have to follow the letter of the law spirit goes first but you have to also follow the specific instructions if you're going to be doing this offering okay uh now we're going to look at a large omission it says moses consecrated aaron again these are in brackets so again that's just their interpretation of who it is um, 
and after he, Moses, anointed him. So why this is important and why this is a significant and large omission is because you need to consecrate first before you anoint. You need to set something apart before you anoint them. And they don't even include this. They don't include it at all in the Masoretic. It's just saying this was the dedication of the altar. After that, um, it was anointed. So they interpret it to mean, okay, it was. It's, we're only talking about the dedication of the altar. But in the sept, it's saying, okay, this is the dedication of the altar. After that, someone consecrated it, and after he anointed him. So it sounds like Moses is anointing Aaron, or maybe they're personifying the altar. I'm not sure, but uh, it sounds like it is Aaron. That's what I'm leaning on at the moment. That can always change, but uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards that understanding that it is he, they wouldn't personify an altar. They would say the altar, just like it says here, the altar. And the next one is 89. It's the last verse we're looking at. We have a massive, massive earth shattering difference. It says, when Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, to speak to God, uh, then he heard the voice of Yah speaking to him from off the mercy seat, which is upon the Ark of the Testimony, between the two cherubs or cherubs, and he spoke to him, meaning uh, Yah spoke to Moses. Uh, let's look at the Masoretic. What does it say? And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, uh, so we can see the difference is Moses is speaking to God, but here it's speaking with him. Okay, speaking with him. It's like uh, maybe it is a one-way conversation. It's hard to say, but it's expressed differently. And then it says the voice. He heard the voice of Yah. So he's speaking. He's not just speaking to him. He's being spoken to. So it is a two-way conversation um, versus the voice of one. What does that mean? The voice of one? It's not just anyone. It's the voice of Yah. That's why it's such an important distinction. Uh, he spoke to him. So Moses spoke to the voice of Yah. It is in a one-way conversation. Or perhaps it was the voice of Yah and Moses was mostly listening. Um, but it does say, yeah, he, he went... He went to speak to Elohim, to God. So he was speaking to him. It's, otherwise, it wouldn't say that. And he also heard Yah's voice. Uh, and he spoke to him. So it's hard to say who he and him is. Could be Yah spoke to Moses or Moses spoke to Yah. Either way, uh, both can fit the narrative because it does give credence to both uh, Moses speaking to Yah and Yah speaking to him. However, in the Masoretic, it says that Moses is speaking, Moses is speaking clearly, Moses is speaking to, to Yah, to God. And then Moses heard the voice of one speaking to him. So that's kind of vague and nebulous. Well, who is one and who is him? Is that, I don't know, question mark, speaking to Yah or speaking to Moses? It's hard to say. And that's why the Septuagint is just much more clear and simple to understand and straightforward. So thank you very much for your time. That's all we have for this chapter and for today. Uh, please tune in tomorrow where we will look at Numbers chapter 8. So may our Father bless you and make your way prosperous. Until next time, this is Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Shalom and peace be with you.